The show is different. I'm the host of the show with five other people. We always start with bad food and then show you how to get to good food. People all over the world were shocked when Christopher Kimball quit America's Test Kitchen, the show he made famous. It was 2015. Christopher was known and liked for being very picky when he tested recipes. Fans couldn't believe he just vanished, wondering why the man behind one of the most trusted cooking shows on TV would leave. Chris Kimball left, and now we know why. We're going to tell you what this story is really about today. Chris Kimball's early life and youth. Chris Kimball was born on June 5, 1951. His parents were Mary Alice White and Edward Norris Kimball. Christopher was raised in Westchester County, New York, which is very different from the restaurants that would later shape his career. Kimball's early years were not focused on food, even though his family was wealthy and they lived in a simple house in southwestern Vermont. His family didn't follow any strict rules when it came to cooking, so meals were simple and casual. Kimball didn't have much experience with gourmet food or complicated cooking methods as a child, unlike many chefs and food personalities who found their love of cooking at a young age. They ate simple foods and didn't put a lot of value on cooking as a cultural or family activity. He had three brothers. Little Kimball liked being outside more than cooking when he was younger. He loved hiking and being outside, which helped him develop a focused work ethic and a methodical way of thinking. Early on, I loved being outside, and that love would grow into a deep respect for what is simple and real, what would make his work in the food world stand out. It wasn't until much later that he became interested in cooking. And even back then, it began with more thought and planning than with an emotional connection to food or family rituals. The schooling Kimball got as a child was also very important to his growth. Phillips Exeter Academy is a well-known, private boarding school that is known for having tough studies. He learned how to learn in a logical and analytical way at Exeter for four years. These are skills that would later help him a lot as a cooking teacher and TV personality. Kimball learned to be disciplined and find solutions to problems at Exeter through their tough program, which he would use in his career. In his later work, this organized way of thinking became clear where he took the mystery out of cooking skills and made them easy for home cooks to understand by showing them step by step. After Kimball graduated from Phillips Exeter, he went to Columbia University in New York City and studied in primitive art. He graduated in 1973. He didn't major in anything related to cooking, but it did introduce him to a lot of different types of art and culture, which would later shape how he looks at food and media. Kimball looked into different job paths while he was at Columbia. It was during this time that he came across publishing. His job as an editorial assistant taught him about writing, editing, and marketing, which set the stage for his future career in food media. Kimball didn't go to school to learn how to cook, but his intellectual curiosity and hard work ethic helped him become successful in the food business. He made a name for himself in the world of cooking thanks to his early work in publishing and his methodical way of fixing problems. As a result of helping to start Cook's Magazine in 1980, Kimball's career took off. This led to him starting America's Test Kitchen, a company that makes TV shows, magazines, and cookbooks that make cooking easier for home cooks. Kimball's background might not have been normal for someone who works in the food industry, but it put him in a unique situation to look at cooking from an educational and analytical point of view. He brought a new perspective to food media because he loved being outside and thought in a controlled, methodical way. Kimball didn't just focus on cooking art, he also made it his goal to teach and empower home cooks by stressing how important it is to understand the science and techniques behind cooking. Then how did these traits help Kimball become a major figure in the food media? We're going to talk about the next very interesting part of his life, so stay tuned. How Cooks Illustrated came to be and how it all started. Christopher Kimball got his start in publishing by working with his half-brother after finishing from Columbia University. Their job was to work together for a printing company. She went to the Center for Direct Marketing in Westport, Connecticut, after a few years, though. From this point on, he became more interested in cooking and even started taking cooking classes. His big break came in 1980, though, when family and friends gave him $1 million to spend. Kimball started Cook's Magazine from a small office in Weston, Connecticut, with this money. At first, Cook's Magazine tried to give its readers solid, tried-and-true recipes, but it ran into problems along the way. In the end, Kimball sold the magazine to the big media company Condé, Condé Nast Publications in 1989. Too bad that Condé Nast stopped publishing it, so Cook's magazine is no longer available. He didn't want to give up, though. Later, he bought back the magazine's name rights, got together his old team, and revived it as Cook's Illustrated in 1993. The start of a big change in his work happened at this point. The unique way Cook's Illustrated does things made it very popular very quickly. Unlike other cooking magazines, it didn't have any ads and only had recipes that had been tried very carefully. The recipes were more than just a list of steps. Along with them were detailed explanations of which methods worked and which ones didn't. More and more people were interested in the science way of cooking. 
At first, only 25,000 people subscribed to the magazine, but by 2004, it had grown to 6,600,000 readers. By 2007, there were a million of them, which is a lot more than any other cooking magazine. By 2009, Cooks Illustrated had 1.2 million paid subscribers, and about 300,000 paid members used its website. There were also people who bought the print version of the magazine to those customers. The magazine became well known for its thorough approach to cooking and its recipes that had been tried and tested. People turned to Cooks Illustrated when they were having trouble cooking fish or wanted to learn how to marinate food the right way. The recipes were for a lot of different types of food and cooking methods, from simple everyday meals to fancy meals with great tastes. One thing that made Cooks Illustrated stand out was that it was dedicated to telling stories through pictures. The covers of the magazine had beautiful art about food, and the inside pages had step-by-step -step photos of each recipe to help readers follow along. This helped me follow the cooking steps better. Even for people who were not very good in the kitchen, the magazine gave home cooks the tools they needed to learn dishes they might have thought were too hard for them to do. As word got out about how good and reliable Cooks Illustrated was, more and more people started reading it. America's Test Kitchen, a 30-minute food show on TV that spread Kimball's ideas to even more people, was made possible by this success. Radio shows and cookbooks were also added to the name, which is now part of America's Test Kitchen Limited Partnership. Home cooks all over the country liked Kimball's way of cooking and liked how precise and detailed the magazine was. Kimball's ideas were easy to understand. He wanted to find the best way to make a dish and share it with his fans. About 10 recipes were in each issue of Cooks Illustrated, and a detailed history of how each recipe came to be was given. It was a very collaborative process. About 10,000 readers who were called Friends of Cooks gave comments that helped the magazine decide which recipes to include. Working together made sure that the recipes were tried well and that the results would almost certainly be correct. There are a lot of famous cooks and food personalities who talk poetically about how creative and fun cooking is. Kimball did something different. He thought that cooking wasn't always creative, but rather a skill that needed to be practiced and exact. In a famous interview with Boston Magazine, Kimball said that cooking isn't fun or easy, it's hard work, just like any other job that you want to do well. What made his media brand stand out was that he put more stress on technique and dependability than on style and fun. Kimball and his team didn't focus on popular food topics or interesting stories. Instead, they looked at recipes that had been tested thoroughly to make sure they would work for home cooks. Kimball became one of the most important speakers in American food media, even though she had never been to culinary school or worked in a professional kitchen. In a rather unusual way, he got his start in the world of cooking. He said in an interview that he fell in love with food while living in Vermont with a baker named Marie. Instead of giving him written directions, she cooked for him and showed him how to do it. This hands-on training, along with the way he studied systematically, set him up for future success. Christopher Kimball made a big difference in American food. He has taught a lot of people how to cook through Cooks Illustrated and other media projects, giving them the skills and courage to make meals at home. Home cooks all over the country believe him because he is so focused on accuracy and quality. This has made him a major figure in the world of food media. On November 16, 2015, all of a sudden Boston Commons Press said Kimball was going because of a disagreement over a contract. But what did this happen for? How Kimball's got out of America's test kitchen. All of the 2016 shows had already been filmed, and Kimball was the host. But he stopped working directly for the company right away. In September 2015, an outsider named David Nussbaum to replace Kimball as CEO. Since then, there had been signs of a fight between Kimball and the company's leaders. Out of all the new people hired, David Nussbaum had the most to do with Christopher Kimball's leaving. Nussbaum tried to make people feel better by saying that they had offered him a fair deal that recognized his ownership and role in the business adding that they were shocked that they couldn't agree. Nussbaum says that Kimball was a part of a bigger plan to restructure America's test kitchen, which included building the company's online presence and brand. Over time, it became clear that the reason was a disagreement over a contract with Boston Common Press, which owns America's test kitchen. Still, all the reports said that the breakup was friendly, and they tried to prove this, that Kimball had already taped the 2016 seasons of Cook's Country in America's test kitchen, and that both shows would air as usual with Kimball as the host. Kimball would still own a small part of America's test kitchen, which was another fact that was made public. Even with all of these promises, it wasn't a surprise that news outlets still didn't like what America's test kitchen would be offering in the long run. Without the man who did it all, how could newspapers like Cook's Illustrated stay in business? The man who started it, edited it, and hosted it. To calm those worries, Jack Bishop, the chief creative officer of America's test kitchen, told The Guardian that the company was built on the idea of working together. According to him, it was made so that papers, books, and even TV shows could go on without a person.
But from Kimball's point of view, things were different. He thought that Nussbaum's leadership and the proposed non-compete agreement would be bad for the company he had built. Kimball said he felt pushed out when he was turned down to sign the non-compete deal. This made him start his new business, Milk Street. At some point, this split ended up in court. This really shows how split Kimball was over America's test kitchen's new direction. Kimball was having a lot of problems at the same time. How was his marriage going? Did he get married or were the ups and downs of business too much for him? Look at the video again to learn more. The daily life of Kimball. Chris Kimball has been married three times, which makes for an interesting personal life. Not much is known about his first marriage, but there is more information about his second and third weddings. Adrian was Kimball's second wife. They were married for 20 years before they split up in 2012. There were four kids born to them while they were together Caroline, Whitney, Emily, and Charles. It is thought that Adrian is an only child and a college graduate from Texas, but there isn't much else known about her past. There were no rumors of problems in their 25-year relationship, so it looked like they were happy together. Even though they had been together for a long time and were getting along, they finally got divorced and agreed to share custody of their children. Kimball agreed to pay both alimony and child support as part of the divorce settlement. However, Kimball broke one of the terms of the deal soon after the divorce, which is why Adrian sued him. Kimball had to pay her $112,000 because the court ruled in her favor. Kimball's third marriage has a very interesting story. In 2002, he talked to Melissa Baldino about becoming his helper. She had no idea that she would become his wife in the end. It's interesting that Baldino wasn't Kimball's first choice for the job he hired someone else instead. But when that person quit after only two months, Kimball offered the job to Baldino, who gladly took it. She became an important part of his team over time, and in 2006, Kimball made her executive producer of America's Test Kitchen in Cook's Country. Even though they worked together a lot, their relationship was strictly business until 2010, when Kimball and Adrian broke up. Early in 2011, Baldino told Kimball how she felt about him, and their work relationship started to turn into a personal one. They got closer over time, and in 2013, they got married at the Memorial Church in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Their relationship continued to grow in both emotional and professional ways, and the two of them started CPK Media together. As the project's producer, Baldino was very important and helped make it a huge hit. His name is Oliver, and he was born in 2014. Their daughter's name is Reich, and she was born in 2019. Even though it can be hard, Kimball and Baldino have been able to maintain a successful business relationship while also raising a young family. They still work next to each other at Milk Street today. They made after Kimball left America's Test Kitchen, a multimedia food business. It's clear that they have a strong, supportive bond in both their personal and professional lives. From his second marriage that lasted a long time to his eventual partnership with Baldino, Kimball's life has been full of ups and downs. His journey shows how he has continued to grow and change in both his work and his family life. How did his friendship with Melissa help him? Or did Christopher handle everything related to his job by himself? What did he have in mind for the new food brand? Kimball knew what brand wanted to do. In America's Test Kitchen, Kimball wanted to keep things separate, which got him fired from the company he had helped grow into a food media empire. From that event on, Kimball needed a fresh start and a chance to go in a different direction in the food world. Kimball co-founded CPK Media with his wife Melissa Baldino in 2016, not long after leaving America's Test Kitchen. The name CPK could stand for Christopher Paul Kimball, but the company became well-known for its media business, Christopher Kimball's Milk Street, America's Test Kitchen focused on American comfort food and very tried and true recipes. Milk Street, on the other hand, wanted to bring foreign flavors and easier cooking methods into home kitchens. This showed that Kimball's ideas about cooking had changed, changing to include more countries and less strict rules in their cooking. Melissa Baldino was a big part of how CPK Media came to be. Baldino had decades of experience making food media as the executive producer of America's Test Kitchen. This made her the right person for this new job. She was an important part of building the Milk Street brand because she co-founded it with Kimball and was in charge of producing its TV and radio shows. Baldino's knowledge of production and planning complemented Kimball's ideas. So, it was easy for the company to move into multimedia projects. In a very short time, CPK Media grew very quickly and now has a cooking school, a magazine called Milk Street Magazine, Milk Street Television, and Milk Street Radio and a series of cookbooks or magazines where Kimball's team shows viewers different recipes and ways of cooking that are influenced by their culture and cooking styles. The cooking school is another thing that CPK Media has to offer. It offers cooking classes both in person and online, with the goal of teaching people foods from around the world. This ability to make meals that are suitable for different cultures set Milk Street apart from America's Test Kitchen.
The recipes in this show are all similar and can be made by anyone from any culture. At this point, the company was the world's most important source of food news, like America's Test Kitchen, but with a twist from other countries. Even with all of these attempts and thanks to his popularity, Kimball was sued many times. Why did it happen, and did his new business fail, or did he make it through? Certain facts will shock you. Christopher Kimball is having legal problems. Christopher Kimball was first sued by America's Test Kitchen in 2016. The main charge was that Kimball used company resources to buy plans and intellectual property for his new business, Milk Street, while still working for America's Test Kitchen. The accusations are against Kimball, saying that she broke her duty by starting a rival business and trying to get help using private information and connections she made while working at America's Test Kitchen. It was clear that he had a bias and that he was abusing his role at America's Test Kitchen. They also said that he designed Milk Street using secret information from Cook's Illustrated and America's Test Kitchen. While working for America's Test Kitchen, he almost made a rival. Kimball said he never intentionally took money from other people. He said that Milk Street was based on a different style of cooking, one that was global and used easier, more welcoming methods than America's Test Kitchen. He said it seemed like they were being shown in the wrong light. The way they did things was going to be very American. He said that America's Test Kitchen knew about his plans to start something new before he left. He said that there was no proof of any crime. When Milk Street first came out in October 2016, the case began. It went on for almost three years. The parties made a settlement in August 2019 that was kept secret. The settlement terms were not made public, but both sides dropped all lawsuits against each other, which meant the disagreement was over. The deal said that Milk Street and America's Test Kitchen could now work on their own without having to go to court again. In a very clear way, the case showed how deeply divided Kimball and America's Test Kitchen's new management were. Both sides accused the other of dishonest behavior. It seemed like this whole thing was just a show with not much going on. The case didn't stop Milk Street from being successful, and Kimball kept building his new food brand. The second case involved Christopher Kimball and Mark Epstein, a Boston restaurant owner who ran the Milk Street Cafe. In 2017, he sued him for trademark infringement because he was found to have used his restaurant name and image in his new food business, Milk Street. Epstein's main problem was that people might mistake his restaurant, Milk Street Cafe, which opened in the 1980s for Christopher Kimball's Milk, which opened in 2016. Epstein says that having names that are the same for different things makes people confused, especially customers, and hurts the brand of his restaurant. As Epstein's claim against Kimball got stronger, he said that Kimball was stealing the trademark protection that Epstein's business had when he hired Milk Street to promote his new cooking school, TV show, and magazine. Before the court, he said that Kimball's fame and attention from the media could hurt his long-standing business image and the Milk Street Cafe trademark. Epstein hired a lawyer and filed an injunction against Kimball. He wanted the court to tell Kimball that he couldn't use the Milk Street name in his new business. This is based on the idea that customers will think that both businesses are connected, even though they serve very different markets because Kimball is so well known in the food world. A restaurant VS? A news organization? It might surprise you to learn that Kimball also sued another business. Christopher may have sued out of spite, but was there a good reason for him to do so? When and why did this happen? America's Test Kitchen VS, Kimball. It wasn't often that Kimball sued someone else, but the countersuit he filed against America's Test Kitchen was an attempt to protect his business freedom from what he saw as unfair interference. After he was fired from America's Test Kitchen, the cases were finally solved outside of court, so there wasn't a long trial. Christopher Kimball filed the countersuit at the end of 2016, saying that Boston Common Press's legal action against him was the reason he lost millions of dollars in possible investments for his business. Kimball also sued the website for defamation, saying that it hurt his image. That website is no longer working. The three-year court battle between the media giants ended in 2019 when both sides came to an agreement, saving both sides a lot of money in legal fees. A press statement from Current said that both sides agreed to certain business terms that would let them work together in the market. However, not many details about the settlement were given. As part of the deal, he had to sell his shares in America's Test Kitchen to Boston Common Press. Later, an America's Test Kitchen spokesperson told the Washington Post that the company is thrilled with the settlement. The spokesperson also said that getting back Mr. Kimball's shares in the company was very important for its growth and future. Christopher Kimball had to deal with a lot as he tried to get himself and his business back on track. During this whole time, he learned a lot of important things. Stay tuned to find out what his favorite and most cherished memory is, the best moments Kimball has. A very special memory for Christopher Kimball is the time he spent with the famous chef Julia Child. Child is very important to Kimball, 
who is known for his careful and scientific way of cooking. He calls her the best teacher ever. In a big way, she changed his job and the world of cooking in general. And for Kimball, the chance to work with her is still one of the most important events in his life. Julie Child was already a famous chef when Kimball was just starting out in the food world. Child changed the way Americans thought about French food with her famous cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, and her hit TV show, The French Chef. Her friendly, funny, and easy to understand way of teaching helped a lot of people understand how to cook. In the United States, she became one of the most loved food celebrities. Child's ability to make complicated cooking skills easy for the average home cook made her the best food educator in Kimball's eyes. Kimball would go on to start America's Test Kitchen. Kimball had the chance to learn from Child, and the two of them worked together on several occasions. Kimball often thought about how Child had affected his work, especially when it came to making recipes and teaching people about food. Their ways of cooking were different. Kimball's was more scientific and methodical, while Childe's was more intuitive and based on the cultural and emotional parts of food. Their goal was to give home cooks the tools they needed to do well in the kitchen. Child invited Kimball to a cook-off at her house in Cambridge, Massachusetts. This is a memory that stands out for her. It was an event that he talks about with a mix of humor and respect. Kimball has a very clear memory of that day and says that Child was a fierce competitor who never shied away from a task in the kitchen. Child gave him a job during the cook-off to open a plate of oysters, which he wasn't very good at at the time. Kimball talks about how scared he was to be in front of such a famous chef. Child saw him struggling and walked over to him in her usual way and asked, what are you doing? Kimball was so upset that all he could say was, give me a glass of wine to calm down, he jokes that we got along great after that conversation. Even though things were tense at the time, Kimball has happy memories of this conversation. It was a great example of Child's skill and kindness, her ability to teach without being condescending, and her ability to make even hard jobs seem doable. This event was a turning point for Kimball. Not only did he grow as a cook, but he also changed the way he thought about food education. Child's impact can be seen in his own work, especially in the way he insists on recipes being tested very carefully, which is a hallmark of America's test kitchen. Child was admired by Kimball for a lot of reasons, not just that one cook-off. He often said that she influenced how he worked in food media, especially how important it was to make cooking easy for everyone, no matter how skilled they were. In 2004, Kimball paid tribute to Child on PBS, which showed how much he valued her efforts to the world of food. Child was more to Kimball than just a teacher. She was an example of great food education and a lesson of how important it is to teach well. Through his meetings with Julia Child, Kimball learned a lot about being patient, paying attention, and how important it is to enjoy cooking. Even though his own style was unique and based on testing and scientific accuracy, his fond memories of being a child shaped his mindset and made him even more determined to help home cooks succeed. What do you think now that you know why Christopher Kimball quit America's Test Kitchen? Was it fair for him to leave? Or do you think something else could have been done? Just write your thoughts in the box below. Also, don't forget to click on the cards on the screen to see more fun movies.